A deck running less than 20 lands? Who would play such a thing? Maybe you? Welcome, my re-sparked planeswalkers. Help us blow up the Oathbreaker format with our budget deck series, The Oath Breakdown. On The Oath Breakdown, I break down a budget deck designed to introduce new players to the format, and then I build it back up so you have a better idea of how to play the deck and why certain cards made my list. Today's deck is Tybalt the Charbelcher. It is a deck for under $40 that focuses on Goblin Charbelcher. Let's start by breaking down this deck's Oathbreaker, Tybalt the Fiendblooded. Tybalt the Fiendblooded costs 2 red mana and is a 2 loyalty planeswalker. If we plus 1 him, we draw a card and discard a card at random. If we minus 4 him, he'll deal damage to a player equal to the number of cards in their hand. And if we minus 6 him, we'll gain control of all the creatures till the end of turn, untap them, and they'll gain haste. Tybalt has three useful abilities for this deck. His plus one will let us control our draws, which is good since we're trying to find a specific card in our deck. His minus four will allow us to punish overzealous opponents who are drawing way ahead of everyone else. And finally, his minus six will allow us to steal all the creatures for one massive combat. Our signature spell this time is Burning Inquiry. It is a sorcery that says each player draws three cards and then discards three cards at random. It is a mini wheel effect, and as well as trying to wheel and deal our way to the Charbelcher, this card will also let us dig a little deeper before we can't afford to play it anymore. So that's what's in our command zone. Let's dig into our game plan. This is a Charbelcher deck based on the type run in Modern. Our goal is to damage our opponents with each activation. And how do we win? Well, we're going to burn our opponents down to the ground. This is a relatively low-powered, janky deck and has a power level of about 6. Now, on to the breakdown. Let's start with the best card that this deck runs on, the Charbelcher. Goblin Charbelcher costs 4 and is an artifact. We pay 3 and tap it, reveal cards from the top of our library to reveal a land card. Then we can deal damage equal to the number of cards revealed this way to any target. If the revealed land card was a mountain, we do double that amount of damage instead, and then all the re revealed cards can go on the bottom of our library in any order. Well, let's look at the not of lands that we're running in this deck. The main reason we're running less lands is so when we have a Charbelcher activation, we can show even more cards so that we're going to do even more damage. So let's look at those not lands in back to back. All the cards in this section are the new modular dual land cards where they've got a spell on one side and they've got a land on the other. We're running these because they're kind of useful on their front side. But on their back side, when we're using a Charbelcher activation, it doesn't see that land, so it allows us to be a little tricky. Akuma Warrior is a 4-5 with Trample with a land on the back. And Spikefield Haze is a 1 red mana, deal 1 damage to any target spell. Next, we have Valkute the Awakening. It says put any number of cards from your hand on the bottom of your library and draw that many cards plus 1. We're running some other wheel effects, so this is actually pretty decent for the deck. Song Mad Treachery for 3 and 2 red says gain control of target creature until end of turn, untap that creature and it gains hate. And then finally Kelzerl's Fury for 2 and a red says it's additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature. Kelzerl's Fury deals damage equal to that sacrifice creature's power to any target. Now with less than the usual lands in the deck, we still want some backup ramp. And in case we also need some blockers, we're going to be running some mana chumps. Gleeman Barrier is a 0-4 with Defender that when it dies, we get to create a treasure token. Hedron Crawler can be tapped to produce one colorless mana. Iron Mirror can be tapped to produce a red mana. Mannequin can be tapped to produce a colorless mana. Plague Mirror has Infect and can be tapped to add a colorless mana to our mana pool. Wily Goblin, when it enters the battlefield, we get to create a treasure token. And it seems kind of strange seeing all these artifacts, but we do have some other cards we'll capitalize these on in a future uh, section. Alpine Guide, when it enters the battlefield, we search our library for a mountain card and put it in onto the battlefield tapped. 
He has to attack each turn if able, and when he dies, we have to sacrifice him. This is good for thinning our deck, and it's kind of mana ramp for a short time. Everflowing Chalice for zero has multi kicker. We it will tap to produce a amount of mana equal to the number of times we've kicked it this game. And finally, Guardian Idol is a two cost mana rock that taps for colorless and enters the battlefield tapped. And if we pay two, we can turn it into a two two creature. Now we need to draw and keep our hands full, so we're going to do that with wheels. Drawing is a cycle. Bone Knot Courier for one red is a 1-1 one, one creature with haste. When it attacks, we exile the top card of our library face down. If we pay red and sacrifice it and discard our hand, we get to put all the cards exiled from play under it into our hand. Anji's Ravager for two and a red is a 3-3. Three, three. It attacks each combat if able. Whenever it attacks, we can discard our hand and draw three cards, and it has madness for one and a red. Magus of the Wheel is a 3-3 human wizard. At any time when he's in play, we can pay one in red, tap and sacrifice him, and then each player will discard their hands and draw seven cards. Wheel of Fate does the same thing, but we cast it by suspending it with four time counters and paying one in a red. Faithless Looting for one red lets us draw two cards and discard two cards, and it has flashback. Cathartic Reunion. We have to discard two cards to it, but then we'll draw three. Teutonic Reformation. We can cycle for two mana, or it will give all the lands in our hand cycling for one red. Neheb, Dreadhorde Champion, for two and two red is a 5-4 with Trample. Whenever he deals combat damage to a player or a Planeswalker, we may discard any number of cards. If we do, we draw that many cards, and then we add that much red mana to our mana pool. Until the end of turn, we don't lose mana as steps and phases end. Finally, in this section, the last two cards kind of capitalize on our wheels. First, we have Glinthorn Buccaneer for 1 and 2 red. He's a 2-4 with haste. Whenever we discard a card, he'll do 1 damage to each of our opponents, so those wheel effects become quite damning. And then, for 1 and a red, if we discard a card, we can draw a card, but we can only use that ability when he's attacking. Elixir of Immortality, we can pay 2 and tap it and we'll gain 5 life and shuffle it in our graveyard into our library. Since we will be wheeling so often, it'll get our opponents close to decking, but as long as we have this card, we won't. Also, in a later section, we're going to be running some group slug style board wipes, and this will help us keep ahead of that life loss. Now, we gotta get that Charbelcher onto the field, so here's some sweet cards that will help us find it and get it back from the graveyard in Tutors to Toot. Goblin Welder for 1 red is a 1-1. One, one. If we tap it, we can choose an artifact in play and an artifact in a graveyard and swap them. Kadutha Forge Master is a 3-5. If we tap it and sacrifice 3 artifacts, we search our library for an artifact card and put it onto the battlefield. So this is a great way to use those artifacts from the earlier section. Skyship Weatherlight. For 4 colorless mana, we can play it. And then if one enters the battlefield, we can remove any number of creatures or artifacts from our library exiled under it. If we pay 4 and tap it, we can put a card under it into play at random. Hoarding Dragon for 3 and 2 red is a 4-4 four, four with flying. When it enters the battlefield, we search our library for an artifact card and exile it under the dragon. When the dragon dies, we put that card in our hand. And Goblin Engineer for 1 and a red is a 1-2. When he enters the battlefield, we search our library for an artifact card and put into our graveyard. If we pay 1 and tap him, we can sacrifice an artifact, return target artifact with convert mana cost 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. Now, in our next step, we're playing a very odd deck, so in order to keep up with our opponents, we've got to keep their stuff off the field in Removal, Removal, Removal. First off, we have Skewer the Critics. For 2 and a red, it can do 3 damage to any target, including Planeswalkers, and it has Spectacle for 1 red. Our Braid for 1 and a red will deal 3 damage to our creature or destroy target artifact. So the fact we get a Fireball style effect and a free spell off of it is pretty awesome. Then we have Shenanigans. For 1 and a red, it will destroy target artifact. If it's in our graveyard for any reason, we can return it to our hand by dredging 1. And finally, after our little removal spells, let's look at the board wipes in The Big Guns. Rolling Thunder costs X and 2 red, and it deals X damage divided any way we choose amongst any number of targets. Star Storm for X and 2 red will deal X damage to each creature and cycles for 3 mana. Rolling Thunder for X and red will do X damage to each creature 
without horsemanship and each player. Earthquake will do X damage to each creature without flying in each player. Chain Reaction will do X damage to each creature where X is the number of creatures in play. And Breaking End will destroy each creature that can't be regenerated unless one of our players chooses to take 6 damage. So that tells us everything we need to know about the deck, but how do we make it run? Well, let's look at that in the mana base. In this deck, I am running Myriad Landscape. It enters the battlefield tap. We can tap it for a colorless, or we can tap two and sacrifice it to look for two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped. Evolving Wilds lets us search for a land and put it onto the battlefield. And Terramorphic Expanse lets us do the same. The reason we're running these three cards is they allow us to thin our deck, so when we do do a Char Belcher, activation, there is less likelihood we're going to hit it land real soon and we're going to do massive damage. And then, finally, we're running 13 mountains. Now that we've had a look at all the cards in the deck, let's do a quick price check. Our deck prices include our Oathbreaker and the shipping cost, but not the cost of our basic lands. And these prices are based on the best price I could find on TCG Player at the time of recording. There are a total of 82 decks for this Planeswalker on Oathbreaker.edhrec.com with a total average of $60.09. Our deck is going to be $37.92. If you want to see a breakdown of the deck's cost, there's a link post in the description. This deck was built on a budget. However, if you like this deck and you want to build it up to make it more competitive, there should be some comments from our veterans below helping new players get better at the game. Now, if you want to support the channel in other ways, you can do so by using our links in the description to shop at TCG Player, Inked Gaming, or the Signature Spellbomb Store. If you want more deck tech content, check out this Oath Breakdown playlist and the Holly Deck playlist here on the end card. And a huge thank you to my viewers. And a quick reminder, be like a planeswalker and show your loyalty by subscribing to the channel. Remember, I can't do this without you guys, and I wouldn't.